What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Carpool Gaming for our very special mini series dedicated to The Last of Us on HBO. My name's Matt and I'll be your host for this Joyful Rides events. I'm joined as always by the Supreme Court of Canada himself, Mr. Court Lalonde. What's up, dude? Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm good. I wish I used that new NVIDIA thing so I could not oh, have to right? look at the camera. And, uh, dude, I we're doing... I, we'll get into We'll it. figure it out before our next show. I gotta have that. I, I don't know. care. People say it's creepy and I'm like, it's the greatest thing ever. It's amazing. I wanted to. And we're joined, of course, by the $2 hero himself. What's up, Seth? Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm super excited to do this, man. I'm in PlayStation land. What is I this? I know. Hey, the most Last of Us background ever in that corner, though, right? True. I know. True, right? like I'm yeah. telling if he just could put like a like you know like a butterfly or or something or like or like some a sort of thing hang mutilated dead pen. body, or I'll just I'll just take some like flower and like just throw it behind me and have some spores <laughs> floating around. We'll just like, do that. We, like we all <laughs> noticed like the guitar. One hundred percent. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Be Be before we get before we get in yeah. into it's the just, nitty gritty, I, see it, right? I know I'm at it's it is very very the Last of Us. I love it. Uh, welcome to the, to uh, a show of of its very first of its kind here on Carpool Gaming, where we're going to be each you know digging into the Last of Us each and every week over the course of its first season. Because of course we are huge Last of Us fans here, and we've been very very much looking forward to it. Uh, we're going to talk about spoilers in a little bit. We'll give you a clear heads up when that happens, and we're going to end up talking about what we think you know where the show is going, what's going to happen next week. It'll be Court and I for most of it. Seth is going to be popping in. And, of course, we may have some other special guests along the way. But strap in because it's going to be an adventure. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of the show, very quickly, I want to just talk about our history with The Last of Us, right? Have you played the games? What do they mean to you? Give us like a minute or two of what The Last of Us means to you before we get into the, the, the what the show really is. Uh, and, Court, I'm going to toss it over to you first. Oh, I was going to let Seth go first, mm. but that's fine. Um, so I have been playing The Last of Us since PlayStation 3. I finished it on PlayStation 3 twice because to do the new game plus. Uh, right then and there, after I remember my initial playthrough, I, I've talked about this many times. I didn't have the emotional, um, connection. Mm -hmm with the beginning of the game like everybody else did at the time i almost was like oh it's still great like i was captivated by the story um and i remember at the time playing and i was like oh my god this is like lifelike it looks so good this is like watching a tv show mm -hmm. uh and this was the very first game for me personally um mass effect almost got there with me but with this that i was like oh my god this is what video games are supposed to be telling a story like it, it was just it, it shook to me to my core. It was just so captivating, and I didn't want to stop playing. Um, I finished it twice on PlayStation 3. It came out on PlayStation 4 at the very beginning of the PlayStation 4 life cycle. I 100% beat it t two more times. Um, <laughs> every time that I play this game, it always feels new, and I never get bored. Very rarely is there a game where I can keep going back mm -hmm. and playing the same story. Like I can definitely play those always online games, so on and so forth, but... When the story is the same, I always find, and this is the only game that's ever done it to me, I find these new things. Mm -hmm. Like I, I said to you guys before the show, I watched the show twice already today. I watched it last night with my wife live, and I watched it already twice today so I could get more and so I didn't miss anything. It then got re-released um, this year on the, uh, sorry, last year mm -hmm. on the PlayStation 5. Uh, I platinumed it. It uh, was my game of the year. Um, it was one of my game of the years. It's a remake, so, you know. It's it's just doesn't count, but it's still after playing it. I was first time ever playing a game where I, as Matt knows, I had to stop playing, and at certain segments of the game, I had to stop playing so that I could hug my daughter the next day. It really, um, really got to me, and it's it is my uh, best game of all time. Mm -hmm. I've read the comics, I've read some books, I've I endure i it, i love everything to do with the story and the world that Druckmann and and everybody over at naughty dog has created it's just it's amazing so it sounds like you you kind of like the last of us which is why you're here which is why we're going to talk about it seth let's throw to you what does the last of us mean to you yeah i i mean i love the last of us um i played the original release on ps3 quite a quite a lot actually um i think i i don't know if i platinumed it because i think it had like didn't it have like some weird trophies in there? I don't know. Anyway, I it played did. it. It had extreme difficult trophies. They were yeah, redonkulous. Mm. Yeah, I, so I didn't platinum it, but um, but when it came to PS4, I replayed it, and that's actually the last time I've played The Last of Us. And then 
uh, when The Last of Us Part Two came out, it came out kind of in like I was in a weird headspace, like kind of COVID pandemic, like mm-hmm. kind of headspace, and I was like, I'm just not in the right place to play this game right now, and I still haven't played it. I still haven't played The Last what of the- Us Part Two. I know I could get this guy off the show. <laughs> um, Honestly, I don't know, Matt. Like I, I know Matt and I have our differences on which one is the better game, and it's obviously Part One. But still, the fact that you haven't even. I know. Okay. Facts, Better things are ahead for Seth. That's why. Yeah, because no, he's going to play it. That you know what? For this year, Seth is playing The Last of Us Part Two. Mm-hmm. Well, here, here's the thing. I'm waiting for them to either do like because I'm almost wondering if they're just going to do a PS5 like re-release of Part Two. Also, I think so. Hundred percent. So I might just wait and do that and then play part one again and then part nice. two back to back on PS5 and do it that way. But anyways, I really do adore the first Last of Us and um, I, I'm probably like rusty on some of the story details, but it, it's it's been really cool to watch the show and see how things jive and don't jive. So I'm excited well, to talk about it. I'm super stoked to hear, dude, because I think you're also going to bring a pretty cool different perspective as opposed to Court and I who are very immersed in it. So it'll be it'll mm-hmm. be awesome to have this conversation with you here as well. Um, as for myself, I'm a massive Last of Us fan. Um, you know, played the first one when it came out. I remember, like, you know, like locking my room, being like, "My brothers are not coming in here. They are too young for this. <laughs> I'm like, this is my space. I'm playing." And fell in love entirely with what the first game was. Um, it, it's probably like my first memory of like a game that like truly resonated with me with a story, one that truly kind of hit my heart in a way that and it absolutely didn't let go. Um, and you know, played it again on PS4. Played part one again here over here on PlayStation Five. Um, and then, of course, played part two, which, in my opinion, is the better out of the two. But the thing is, is like they're both so it's wrong. Uh, well, um, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, court, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I, I love and adore both of these games deeply. Like I remember playing part two and just like like the amount of times that part one breaks you and then part two again just breaks you over and over again in very fundamentally different ways these games are incredibly special they are some of my favorite games of all time and i just think i'm so glad to be at a point now where we have hbo you know handling the show where we have neil Druckmann involved where we have some of the original casting characters returning you know like marlene is the same actress that portrayed her in the games and you know what i mean like there's so many fantastic things that we're going to get into that i'm just so happy in this timeline that we currently reside in, we have HBO's The Last of Us. And I got to say, guys, to kick things off, uh, we won't get into spoilers yet. We'll just kind of give our quick thoughts on the episode as a whole. I loved it. I loved every second of it. The full hour 20 blew by in no time flat. Absolutely adored every character that we've seen. The changes that they've made so far were ones that I'm very curious to see how they develop. I adored the first episode. It is exactly what I wanted out of this show. Court Am I wrong? I no, you're not. I I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. As someone that, and I know you're as well. Like we, I really know the story very well. Mm-hmm. Like I like I said, I've I technically I finished the game five times. Last of Us Part One. I finished only finished Last of Us Part Two twice. Mm-hmm. And I know there's New Game Plus. So you know what I'm gonna do this year? I'm gonna play it again. Me too. So I'll just play it on New Game Plus, and I think I might try and platinum because there is no difficulty trophy, I believe. I'll double check. Mm. I've even read, that's why I was grabbing, there is this comic that you can get off Amazon uh, oh, here yeah. in Canada. It's The Last of Us American Dream. Mm-hmm. It gives a little bit more to Left Behind, which is the DLC from Part 1. But if you actually, sorry, the DLC from The Last of Us, mm-hmm. when Part 1 came out, they just kind of put it together, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it's a must read for any Last of Us fan. And I'm very curious to see if more of this is in the show right because we know from the trailers and so on and so forth but i was very um happy to see the nuances that they brought in that are from the game um they stayed true to the source material and didn't waver Mm -hmm. um i i know i'm not in the majority here but i really didn't like the witcher on netflix Mm -hmm. i thought it was nothing to do with the actual game and it just didn't make any sense to me uh, I thought they just went too far from it. Uh, same with Assassin's Creed movie. I know there has been great adaptations of video games like Sonic and 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 so forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one nailed it. Yep. Like na- it nailed the ambiance. It nailed the feeling that is Last of Us. We'll get into the the things that they were different. That some of them I'm not a big fan of. But mm-hmm. you know what? Still, even being not a big fan of some things, I still love it. Right. It was so so good. Seth, what about you? Spoiler free thoughts on episode one. Yeah, so so I am just full disclosure. I'm somebody who normally hates even the idea of video game adaptations, TV, movie, whatever. To me, I'm like, 
video games are the ultimate art form. I would way rather just play it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and so, but coming into this, I'm like, okay, well, this is such a story forward character forward. Like that's what it's all about. The gameplay is really secondary in mm-hmm. the last of us, at least to me, I I'm here for the story in the world and the characters and everything. Um, so the way they have approached this with this show, I think, um, is really smart because we are very clearly following story beats, but we're given additional time and context quiet time time to really kind of like sit in this pocket and like and fill in some of the blanks and get just a little bit more meat than was there before but it still has plenty of those things where i mean there are moments in this first episode even that are just one-to-one from the game Mm -hmm. like straight up and it's like and it's really cool to see stuff like that and like little tiny easter eggs and stuff that i'm sure we can talk about but um, to me, this is like the perfect way to, to approach the material is to, is to take it, take what's there, respect what's there, but just give you a little bit more context. I think it was handled really, really well. I'm hundred percent with you. Uh, and, and without further ado, folks, let's, let's get into spoilers because obviously we are going to spoil everything in this episode in about five seconds. So if you, for some reason are watching this and haven't watched the episode now, uh, it, now is the time to go do so. So we're going to go into spoilers right about now. Holy crap, guys. This this episode is fantastic. We're not going to go through every story beat, beat by beat, but we're going to kind of, you know, fly through the episode just kind of a, in, a, in a kind of larger fashion. But I love how much more we got out of the quote unquote past the before yep. times we like I loved yes. every like I loved how much time we spent with Sarah in that front, Agreed. you know, 30 minutes of the episode, because again, I just think it, everything leading up to her death just felt even more poignant and hit even harder. What did you guys think? Seth, I'll throw to you first. What did you think about the, the before times, the pre infection? So I loved that. That's probably my favorite part of the episode. If I'm being honest, mm-hmm. like I, I love the extra time with Sarah. I think the actress that plays her is, I think I thought she was amazing. Like I, um, I, and I loved, yeah. Like just getting to know, the ins and outs of their day-to-day life, like Joel just kind of being this like hardworking dad and everything. And like how he's sort of like, not, not that he's not there, but he's like, he works so hard. He's like forgetful of things, even his own birthdays kind of like, uh, but, <laughs> but like she, we get even like little tinges of her life at school and the way that things go for her at school and stuff like that, that stuff is really powerful. And the way you can sort of intuit little things like how, oh, after school, she hangs out with Miss Adler, like the neighbor lady and stuff like this. And, you know, I, I just, I love that. That's exactly what I want out of this show. Mm-hmm. I love 100%. It. Court, what about you? Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the the very beginning when you had uh, Big Head from uh, Silicon Valley. Yes. And he's, yes. he's, he's, he's doing the the interview and they really give us a yes. background because that's yep. one of the things I was hoping from it uh, as someone a huge fan of the lore and a huge fan of the, the franchise I was actually hoping for episode one to pretty much be all the background on on where it came from and so on and so forth and which like we finally figure out which country it started in like all those kind of things but I wanted almost wanted a little bit more uh, I love the actress that portrayed Sarah um, I just wish she was younger I know that sounds weird, but it's and it, it might have something to do with, you know, the eventual thing of killing her. Um, I just it was something my wife said to me. She was like, if she was a little bit younger, I would have felt worse. Mm. And I was like, you know what? In the game, she was. And as, as a father to a young daughter, I still was like I was full of knots. As soon as she appeared on the screen, my stomach started getting into knots because my wife had no clue what we were watching. Right. She had. She knows it's a video game, and that is only her context. That's it. She knows that it is very an emotional game to me, but that is it. She knows nothing else um, because she never really asked. And we're watching it, and every time we're getting to know Sarah more and more, it is me who played the games. It made me like the character more and made me even feel worse. I know. Because now I know about her life. Now I know about what she wanted to do for her dad and so on and so And it just, oh, man, when when she finally does die. And when they show the, the shot of the uh the light from the gun hits joel's face it's the exact carbon copy to the to the game as, as well um i thought they did a phenomenal job but it, it crushed me uh i bawled i know my wife did and then i turned to her and i was like um you're all right she's like it's just a video game and i jokingly in my head it was like no it is not just a video <laughs> game it is a story and that was the thing about this that is it's such a powerful story mm-hmm 
that it can be adapted to do any form that you're not like, oh, well, a lot of times we play a video game. We're like, how the heck are you going to make a movie about that? Like Mario's coming out and we're all still like, still, how are you making a movie about that? Yep. Like it's a side scrolling, you know, action adventure type thing, I guess. But I thought they did a very good job with all that and, and making Sarah more um, impactful. And I, and I do like the subtle nuances that they changed um, how Tommy is in jail. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. We never knew where Tommy was. All we know is Joel was with Tommy. Yep. Right. And Joel comes bursting through the door. I did. For some reason, I didn't want Sarah to go next door and see the dead bodies and all that. I would have rather the jumping through the window, all that that happens in the game. Mm-hmm. I, I wish I got that instead because I found that more impactful because you're walking around as the character. Yeah. I explained that to my right. wife, like the beginning of the game, you are Sarah. Yeah. She's like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, it's, <laughs> they get you. Um, but I, I really like the subtle things at the very beginning on the nods to the game and the not, but because it's at the beginning of the uh, beginning of it, I wanted to get more of an opinion on you guys. We don't get spores, okay? Nope. So they've decided that tendrils um, that are coming out of the, the neighbor's mouth, that is what spreads the virus, and that is what is so on and so forth. I one wonder if when they that was the original vision from Neil Druckmann and they couldn't put it in the game because it would have been really hard to um, Animate. visualize. Yeah. Or do you guys feel, because this is the way I feel, that they really missed out with the spores? And not having them in there. I I don't know. I'm undecided as of yet because for me, I don't think this is like as like a simple as a change of, mm-hmm. you know, more dust in the air or whatever. Or I don't even think it's because like, you know, Courtney, you and I have had this discussion even like with Mandalorian, right? Pedro Pascal is masked pretty much the entire two, way through that series. Right. So the whole thing about covering up the actors and actresses' faces to me doesn't feel as much. I feel there's a different angle here that we have not seen as of yet. I feel like whether, you know, if, cause like in the, through the spore sections in the game, when you're walking through, they mask up. Is it going to be that these spores, that these tendrils kind of live on even outside of that, right? Are there going to be dangerous of them, like the tendrils catching onto them as they're moving through an apartment complex and, you know, dragging them around? Are we going to see something else done in a different way through these things? That's my mind of it. For me, I don't think the spores change is a massive integral one to the overall plot, but I am curious because I feel there's more intent here than just we didn't want to cover up the actors and actresses' faces. I feel like we're going to see something happen that is directly tied to them making the change from spores to tendrils, whether it's a more of an environmental threat, a more, you know, whatever, it's going to be harder for them to move to certain areas without getting grabbed or chased or whatever. I feel like there's something else here that that's why they made the change at least that's kind of where i'm thinking seth where are you at on it i think tendrils are just creepier like i think there you know i think it really is as simple as that like when you when you see like these these infected zombies or whatever and they just have like these gross mushroom tendrils coming out of their mouth i'm like that's creepy man and that's like and that's very different from a standard zombie thing when you see them um, when the infection's like really, you know, the outbreak is really happening and they're just like hunched over bodies, but they're just like stuck on them. Like they're not actively like mawing and like ripping and t- like they're just stuck on them, infecting them. That's disturbing to me. Like that to me was like, okay, this is how they're different from normal zombies that you see right. in The Walking Dead or whatever it is. They're just trying to further their viral infection, you know? Um in, in the video game, like, when you see spores, you kind of know, oh, I'm getting into, like, a really infected area where there's going to be, like, a bloater or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, scary. Um, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's scary and intense and stuff. Um, and I also think that, like, you know, Joel and Ellie and characters like this are way more important to have their faces shown than something like the Mandalorian. So, um, so I can kind of see that perspective, too. But for me, I'm like, I think the tendrils are just, like, creepier. I think that spores work better for the game. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and I do think it also, like you were saying, Matt, it remains to be seen. Like, we'll, we'll kind of see what happens. But, Cor, I know this is something that you brought up um, to us before we started recording. But, like, they do make those, like, visual illusions to spore is quite a bit so yes and 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 that's one thing i had to like because i was watching it and i said to my wife i'm like oh if you only knew what that meant mm-hmm, right. and I, i'm wondering if it is a subtle nod because like there's a lot of times in movies where they'll show light hitting off like when they were opening a book in the game when she opens up the billboard book there's a little bit of dust that's coming off mm-hmm. but the dust is really thick for no apparent reason like i like it's and i don't i think it was purposeful especially when um tess and joel 
are going into the underground for the very first time. It was interesting how they got to there compared to where they got to there the first time uh, in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't have, they didn't go through the time. They didn't go through those like secret passages or move the th- They, they kind of just like were there and they were, they were already going. But once again, they also changed why they were doing what they were yep. doing, which I also liked. Um, and I noticed when the flashlights were shone, shown, um, the dust was very thick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when they, when you first see the very first infected, that it's stuck up against the wall because they're dead. It's over. Like the, and that was the weird part because you're talking about the tendrils. Well, I thought for sure there'd be tendrils coming off that, and there wasn't, right? So I was like, yeah. huh, okay. But that also gets us to the point of how much they changed. Um, okay, so we had Tommy that was in jail. So that's a change. That's a deviation from the game. Mm-hmm. But we don't know if it was or not because we still never, ever knew. But then you have Sarah as the one that goes to the neighbors instead of Joel. But we also had the whole w- reason for them needing yes. to go somewhere was because of Tommy. In the game, he acts like him and Tommy have been distant and they got in a big fight and it's over. Mm-hmm. In this, Joel is actively looking for Tommy and that is motiv- his motivation. And I do love that in the game they joked about uh, – he Joel jokes about being a drug dealer. And, and, and in, the, in the show, they're like, you know what? Let's make him a drug dealer. Right. Which, which I, I truly enjoyed. And I, I did find it hilarious at, of that factor. But I was thinking about, you know, that subtle change where they were needing the car battery and what they were doing to get Tommy gave more of a motivation for Joel, which I actually really liked. Because at the beginning, we're like, when you play the game, I think back, I'm like, what is Joel's motivation? Exactly. And that's something that I, I really, really enjoyed as well. Because, like, like, we don't really hear about tommy in the original game until the story kind of becomes a necessary like you have to know about him because that's where they're going next right right with this one you def- it definitely sets joel up a little bit more of- with his own reason before you know you really start to see him care about ellie and care about their journey you see you give him a reason as to why they're heading west right and it's a very personal one and i do like that again marlene brings up tommy you know tess brings up uh tommy like there's much more uh, there's much more about that character of from much earlier on that you can start to see that he's going to be an integral part of the story moving forward. And especially everything that they do with him in part two, which I, we're not going to spoil, but like there is a much clearer reason for why things are happening. Um, and I, again, like I do like, like Joel is in full survivor mode, right? Like even like him seeing like, like the scene of, um, you know, him slamming back the pills and drinking all the alcohol, you totally. see what he's going through, even like, you know, when he's grabbing the kid's body out of the truck to burn it. Like there are moments here that just are such clear, like they're clearly painting him as someone because, you know, that's the thing about the, the original last of us is that we get a lot of, Oh, Joel's a tough guy until you see him kind of peel that away over the course of the game. I like that we see him in full on survivor mode right now. You see that he is hurting. You see that he is still very much not over everything that happened. Even when he points the gun at Ellie, Right, like, or or towards the end of the episode when the when the soldier points the gun and he gets in between Ellie and the I gun, love right? That. Like, and then they have the flash. He has the flashback exactly, of Sarah, which he's is triggered. More like in the game, we always think about the subtle nod of like, yes. when does when does it click for Joel? Well, in episode one, they're like, it clicked right then and there. Yep. Like, even though I love the fact his first introduction to Ellie is one flipping her over his shoulder yeah. into the wall. Yeah. Two, when she walks by him, she gives him a hard shoulder to go mm-hmm. pick up her knife. Shoulder so there's like him. animosity right off the bat there, which I really enjoyed. But then right away, Joel's like, I'm going to kill this dude. Yeah. And I'm going to mangle his face. And the thing that I really loved about that scene, too, is that like it's it because in the game, it is a massive moment. That is when you find out that Ellie has been bit and not been infected. And I love in the moment in the show, that's not the focus of that scene. You know what I mean? The right. audio dims out. The focus is on Joel. You hear the conversation starting to happen, laying the seeds for what I'm sure will be a much bigger confrontation between the three of them in the next episode. But the the, the focal point there is Joel. The bloody fists, him very much like shell-shocked, him very much like, what it, like not even what did I just do, but like he knows he lost control for a second there and he was thinking about Sarah while it happened. The focus on that scene was... Joel, right? And which I think was a fantastic change because then we have the next episode to delve into what does it really mean for Ellie to have been bitten three weeks ago, you know, three weeks ago and her not becoming affected. That's very clearly teeing things up for the next episode while keeping the focus on what just happened because it is an incredible, it is an important moment that is somebody that Joel was friendly with, that's somebody that, you know, they, they work together in some capacity. And I loved that change as well on making that soldier at that point someone who had ties to Joel and, and Tess, not just being a random soldier that they come across. Again, it makes it a lot more personal in that moment, which I really, really liked. 
Yeah, man. I I love um I I love the ways that they have really characterized Joel in this show. Mm-hmm. The ways that they have made him. They're kind of giving you those tinges already of like, hey not necessarily like a great dude, like doing what he has to do to survive. Right. And the he's, he's damaged. Mm -hmm. Like he's totally, like you were saying, when he's throwing that, that little kid's body into the fire, completely detached. Yep. Right. Doesn't even blink while he's doing it. Having to chomp down pills and swig, you know, whiskey just to even sleep. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and one thing that I was curious about, and you guys have played the first game more recently than I have, but I don't remember there being like kind of a romantic tinge to Joel and Tess's relationship in the game. And Wasn't in this one, yeah. And in this one, there's a little bit of that where she like gets into bed with him and cuddles him and stuff and makes him coffee in the morning and whatever. And to me, that was a little bit weird. But I could also see when what, what happens with Tess winds up happening, maybe that makes it hit a little bit harder. I don't know. But there seems like there's a little bit more of like a, if not romance, then maybe they at least like, you know, kind of mess around or whatever. Like there's something there that wasn't in the game. I feel like I, I think it's funny you say that because I literally just watched that scene again. Cause I was trying to find the dust part. So anytime there was yeah. light coming into our room, mm-hmm. um, I was checking to see the dust particles because like, even at the very, I wanted to touch on something about the very beginning of the show, but with the, with test, yes, yeah, she does give him the, you know, almost like the, the reach around hug and totally. she does sleep with them, but she gets up and she's making him breakfast and they're having coffee. I did have an issue with the coffee because as someone that's played the game so many times, it's a running joke between Joel and Ellie of Joel continuing to say like, anytime they go anywhere and there's a coffee machine, Joel's like, Oh my God, yep. coffee. Like I miss it. Like it's, it's one of those things that I haven't got. And I know in part two, um, that's one of the things like he gets coffee again. And then all of a sudden, they're just having coffee first thing in the morning. I'm just like, come on, man. You're going to kill like one of the optional conversations that happens like four times throughout the game. Um, but it is what it is. But yes, there. I don't remember them being um, romantically involved. And it right. seems like they're more of a couple than just two people that are working together to make money. That's so right. interesting that you both say that because I don't know. I coded that entirely differently the first way through. I, I saw them as like... They are a couple, but not in the traditional couple way. They are partners. They, To me, there was always something like half romantic there, but neither one of them wanted to fully commit to it being anything romantic because of the world that they live on. They could lose each other at any like, at any point in time. Right. And then, you know what I mean? So I feel like in the game, the way that it read to me was much more they are together, but they're not together because of the entirety of the situation. So it's interesting that like, you know, you, that cause this to me felt the same way. Right. So you can already come see that Tess is a really hardened, badass character. Like they, they, they show her that right from the jump. Um, and like, you know, I, I, I think that's really interesting, but, um, we are starting to hit the point here. I think I want to touch on a couple more things before we talk about what we think is going to happen next week, because I have to bring up the fact that like a, I love how they're playing with your expectations a little bit. Like in the first couple minutes of the episode, Sarah's upstairs and she wakes up, she's getting ready for school and she looks down the stairs and there's nobody there. And it's this emptiness point. I'm like, are we going to see her die this early? It's the middle of the day. And again, it was just because it was so similar to the shot of her coming down the stairs initially in the first game that I'm like, no way are they going to no, 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 no. And I got anxious and she walked downstairs and it was a normal day. Well, kind of. And then she went off to school, but like, I love how they played with that. Um, and the other thing that I want to shout out is that like the entirety of the their escape, quote unquote, with Sarah and Tommy and Joel in the car, I it's 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 a it's a small thing. I really wish it stayed like a one shot sequence. There was a lot of camera cuts through that mm. scenes that I think like just from them getting into the car to them getting out, I think would have been a really really cool. I think they nailed it regardless, but I, that was for me that I was like I wanted to see that camera kind of move in the panic of the moment with them. But the mm-hmm. planes. Almost like the game. Yeah. Because the game is just. Exactly. That's the way it is. The planes, I thought, were such a great add on to make just feel this like overwhelming panic and just like the explosions going off and the things happening. Like, I it, I thought the planes were just such a visually cool way to like, again, like the world is literally, the sky is quite literally falling. Everything is going sideways. And like having the planes come down and just explode everywhere, I thought it was a really, really cool visual element. Um, that I really, really liked. So I'm going to throw it to you, Court, just to hop on to, is there anything that we haven't touched on that you want to bring up before we move, move into next week's? Well, I love the fact that the, the very first scene we get of Sarah shows her window, which is, if you've played the game, that's the opening screen of the game. And right. that actually changes throughout the game. If you keep going back at part of the loading screen, like eventually when you meet up with Ellie, there'll be a knife there. Like things change while you're playing the game. And I really 
love the little Easter eggs throughout. So like when they show Joel sitting there, there's a guitar off in the corner. Like you, you, you know, like you can see Seth has one behind him. There was a lot of, um, little Easter eggs. Like, um, this is probably going to be the very first time I ever swear on a podcast, but when Ellie yells fuck at the very end of almost near the end of it, when Tess slams the door to talk to Joel, it remind like right away in my brain it was like fuck Joel. That's all I could hear in my mind because Ellie says it throughout the game yep. so many times, right? Like she says that, and when she says it, it almost sounded exactly like Ashley Johnson. Like yes, too. Like yes, I thought for sure like they let her say it and they took it from the game, but like I thought they did so many of these cool little things for people that played the game. Like um, Stingray pointed out in our in our chat. Um, this morning and I had to watch it back to see it again and that was one of the reasons I went back to see it Joel and Tess take off their they lean down on their knees knees take off their backpacks put stuff in their backpacks and put their backpacks back on again like in the game <laughs> also when you when um, Ellie walks into uh, Joel's apartment for the very first time when she looks on the desk there's all the bits and pieces of uh, parts that you pick up in the video game yep. that's mm, all scattered mm-hmm. throughout the desk and I was like wow and then also when Joel is doing the map that's exactly the trek that they do in the game so he's pointing out and he actually stops at all the different parts that you know i don't want to give away what's mm, happening in cool. the next episodes but yeah. like he stops at all those parts and then they're the wanted posters i don't know if you guys noticed the wanted posters were up um for the fireflies throughout yep. when they were walking through downtown boston which was also filmed in alberta also as someone that knows boston they had a place that no longer exists called the fours jo- they walk by it and they actually like there's a street in boston which is it's causeway it's where the boston bruins play and they actually, that's the street, Joel and Chess, that they're mimicking mm-hmm. of them walking down in downtown Boston. And they actually, the stores that were there, those are the ones that are there, like Sullivan's Tap Room, all that stuff. I was just like in awe on how well they did it. I know that's what it looks like in the video game. I just, the one for ones that they did for the video game, for the scenery, for everything, and, you know, the farmhouse blowing up, they did yeah. such a phenomenal yes. job of those Easter eggs. Like for someone to catch all the Easter eggs in this, they would take like 10 watch throughs. Like new rock stars is going to have a field day with this thing. They really will. And like, <laughs> I, I want to shout out very quickly, Bella Ramsey as well, who of course is playing Ellie yes. because you're like the court. When you said that, like there were so many of the times, like, and again, it's so interesting because I can't remember court. What were we just talking about recently that we thought that there was just too much swearing that it was just like almost in abundance. Oh, Forspoken. For Forspoken. No right. Yes. When we were playing the Forspoken demo, all the swearing in the show sticks the landing perfectly. The tonal, the, like the, the, the tone, the way that Belly, the Bella Ramsey like yells at the inflections that she has is just so perfectly Ellie. And like the delivery of those lines is so, so good. I just, oh God, she's already like fantastic. But Seth, what about you? What, clo- like kind of closing I, thoughts on the episode. Yeah. I, I really like Bella Ramsey as, as Ellie as well. I almost wish we'd gotten a little more of her. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and I also really liked um, you, you shouted out Merle Dandridge just reprising a role as Marlene, which I think is awesome. Yes. Like when you, when you have her who already looks like the character, the character is already model. you know, you couldn't have Troy Baker play Joel, mm-hmm. right? He just doesn't look like Joel. Um, but when you have, somebody like Merle Dandridge just come in and just literally play Marlene. I think it was so cool to see. And I love like the little, like she name drops Riley there, like yep. in that, in that moment with Ellie, you know, and having those little, like those little nuggets for people who know, if you know, you know, and you see the way Ellie's face kind of changes in that moment when, when she name drops Riley and stuff. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really good, man. And I, I, I really like those kind of side characters and performances and, and little breadcrumbs that, that fans can pick up on. Really cool stuff. Yeah, and like I don't think it ever feels as of yet. Like it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel like shoehorned in. It doesn't feel like it's just right. shoved in for the sake of shoving it in. Um, let's hop over to one question quick before we close out with our thoughts for next week because we have Nagachaka. We have, we've talked about this a lot, but I just wanted to make sure we shouted him out. What are your thoughts on the minor changes in the HBO show in episode one? Some examples include the use of tendrils instead of spores, Tommy in jail on outbreak day, and buying a car battery from Robert instead of guns. Um, I, I like we've mentioned for me, the, the, all the changes worked as of yet. The bigger changes, like the tendrils and stuff, for me, I'm a wait and see because I do. I just have to think that there is more that they're going to do with them that isn't just gas masks. Court? Yeah, I'm, I, you know how I feel. I thought they were all great. There's just tendrils right now. I, I'm not on a wait and see. I'm, I'm on the, like, I don't like it already, but that's fine. You know, I could be. I hope I'm proven wrong. It was just my only thought is, you know what? Neil Druckmann was on. He has his imprint all over this. Yep. If he chose, there has to be a reason. Exactly. Yep. Seth? 
Agreed. I don't have anything more to add. I totally agree. All right. So we're going to get into even more spoilers here in a second. For anybody who has not played the games, we're going to do a little forecasting on what we think the next episode is going to be about and where we're going to end the next episode. So if you want to go in next week completely unawares, and again, we don't know anything. We're just doing our best Nostradamusing into seeing the future of what we think is going to happen. Um, because for me, I think next episode, and here, final spoiler warning, we're going into it now. I think we're going to end with Tess's death next week. I think mm. what we're going to do is we're going to get a lot of, okay, here is the infected. Here is a clicker. Here is why all of this is a threat with them um, ultimately building up to the showdown at the, what is it? The Capitol building um, mm -hmm. with Tess dying. And then the episode three is kind of like the beginning of the last of us as we know it with the, with the, you know, Ellie and Joel's kind of setting out. Cause I, I think drawing out that middle section, because from the point that, they, the three of them leave, you know, they're outside to the point that the Capitol building hits. There isn't a ton of story that happens in between there. Again, it's more dealing with the infected. Here's what's going on. So I'd be surprised if they dragged that out all the way over into episode three, unless again, we're sorry, we're, we're already going to start to see stuff that we wasn't in the game that we don't know about, whether we're going to run into more survivors, so on and so forth. But Seth, I'm going to go to you next. Where do you think next episode is going? You know, it's interesting. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I haven't replayed the game as recently as either of you have, so it's not as fresh in my memory. But I think it would make sense um, if we got a little bit more of that Ellie backstory in episode two. Okay. If we got a little bit, and I don't know if that's going to take the form of just let's straight up get into Left Behind or. We know it's Left going Behind's to be, in it. Yeah. Left yeah, for sure. In the trailers. Right. We've seen that. And another thing we've seen in the trailer is we're pretty positive that Ashley Johnson is playing Ellie's mom mm -hmm. in the show. We saw the shot in the trailer of her holding a baby and stuff. And so I wonder if we get stuff like that, if we get little flashbacks to Ellie's past and how we got here, because the thing that's going okay. to have to be addressed, as you mentioned, Matt, um, as, as the episode is winding down, um, they kind of have to say like, Hey, look, no, like I got bit. This is three weeks old, but Hey, we can't talk about it now. We have to move on. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to quiet down and they are going to have to talk about it. Right. So I wonder if that's, that's going point. to give us a little bit of space to then dive into Ellie's backstory and also give us a little bit more Ellie in episode two, which I do feel like was a little bit pulled back in episode one. Episode one, I felt like was a very Joel centric episode. I think it would make sense for episode two to be more Ellie centric. So. I think I think, that's, I think that's a really good point. Court, I want to, uh, to save you for last because I feel like you're about to roadmap it out for us. <laughs> I Well, no, I, I, this is just my, my, my thought. I'm 100% agreeing with Seth. I think Left Behind is where they even started off. Mm. They either we go into the apartment buildings, the office building, sorry, and we get to see the clickers for the first time because mm -hmm. we know that. We, you, we all know what's about to happen. I'm really, really, really hoping to be totally honest with you, that they walk through and there's a firefly pendant hanging from um, somewhere, like on a light post or something like that, because they're supposed to be, that's the second firefly pendant in the game. That's how much I've played this game and got all the pendants, <laughs> but uh, they haven't shown us one yet. They've shown us firefly symbols. Mm -hmm. I truly think we either start with Left Behind or we go in, we see clickers for the first time and they have the traumatic experience and then they have the flashback scene where we get almost all of left behind and we have an Ellie episode. We mm -hmm. get we get this. We get American Dreams right. and we get the whole thing cuz there's a lot here. There's a lot of story here that they said. They said there's not they didn't deviate from the story. Mm -hmm. They said the source material stays. So I truly think we get we end it with left behind and the third episode ends either ends or be or is halfway through of killing off Tess but I truly think we're getting left behind in the because left behind mm. is a very long story yep we already know there's nine episodes of this show all right so I've like mapped it out of my brain you do have to extend a little bit at the beginning here so you've got nine episodes to finish this off in so if the second episode's an hour and a half the first one was an hour and 20 minutes the second one's an hour and 20 minutes and then the rest of them are only an hour that's what makes me think Left Behind is in the second episode. I think that's fascinating because for me, I always slotted Left Behind in later in the show, similarly to where it kind of takes place canonically in, in the game is kind of where I had it. Like, I think we're going to, in my mind, they were going to hold Ellie's past back from us towards the back half of the season. But I actually think you guys might be onto something here because then theoretically you can end episode two with the scene on top of the building with them looking at the Capitol building, starting the journey into there that's with what episode I, three. That's, that's, right. Because you need your I, moment, right? You need your moment I, to well, close the episode. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. because that was one of my favorite 
scenes in all the video games, as you know, because and they have showed it in the trailer. And I'm hoping Joel's uh, Pedro Pascal's glance to Ellie is very quick. It kind of annoyed me because in the game, it's it's a very long glance when Tess makes the like, you know, makes the comment like it, look, it, it looks so beautiful. And Joel looks at Ellie. Mm -hmm. I'm really hoping we get more of a, a look. But I think that for sure is the end because they give it to us in the trailer and the trailers have kind of like hinted because it it only makes sense to start the journey there walking towards the Capitol building and almost killing Tess off at the very beginning of the episode. Or it's only an hour, remember? That whole Capitol yeah. building could be an hour. There's a lot to do in that Capitol building. There's a lot going on. You've got, you got people that are going to be dead. There's a lot of things that are going to happen there, right? So mm -hmm. that's why I think we're getting left behind because – why mention Riley in episode one? Yeah. Why mention her mom? Why mention all these things about her if you weren't foreshadowing that you were going to see it in episode two? Because you could do it anytime. Because if you really wanted to go chronologically, Left Behind starts the whole thing off. No, but right? I mean, like, I just mean, I don't mean chronologically. I just mean, like, in the game, in winter. DLC. It's, but yeah, but, but it happens in winter, right? That's what I mean. I see, I, what, you I see what you're saying. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm just like, I don't know, because like even in when we play Last of Us Part One, one of my gripes was I wish they would have somehow made Left Behind in it, yep. in with the story and added it to it, but they didn't. So I just think there was a lot of foreshadowing in episode one, talking about Riley and talking about Left Behind. It was a ton. And to Seth's point, we didn't get an Ellie episode. Are we going to have like Ellie can be episode two, two biggest characters, and episode three is Tess. Yep. And mm. she dies. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Well, we'll be back next week to talk all about episode two with our thoughts and feelings and to see how right we were or how spectacularly wrong we were. Because that's the lovely thing about Neil Druckmann. Anything can happen. I'm so excited <laughs> to be to be back here next week, guys. Uh, thank you for rocking all together. Talk all things The Last of Us community. Let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments. If you have any questions for next week's episode, let us know in the Discord, which you can join for free and will be in the show notes. Or you can just find... Down yonder. Toss those questions in. We'll find them, and we'll be talking next week. Before we go, Seth, people wanted to see and hear more from you. Where could they do so? Here on Carpool Gaming and at $2 Hero on Twitter. Go check them out. Court, what about you? You can find me at Carpool Gaming, or you can find me on Twitter at Court Lalonde. And of course, for myself, you can find me at Carpool Gaming. Make sure you go check out the PlayStation Drive where Court and I talk all things PlayStation all the time. And go check out the Nintendo Drive where Seth talks all Nintendo things all the time. There's nobody else on that show of Noteworthy. And of course, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter at Matt underscore well, Silver Soul. Is great. Yeah, Lockless is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll include Lockless. Go check out Seth and Lockless. Um, the future. We'll be back next week, everybody. We'll see you then. Peace.